In this lesson we're going to take uh, a quick look at email address policies. Now in the last lesson we uh, looked at configuring an accepted domain within the Exchange organization. So what we did there was uh, configure the Exchange organization to accept email sent to that domain. Uh, but that's only part of the configuration required uh, to get mail actually uh, into mailboxes within your organization. So the other part is to configure recipients with email addresses in that domain. And there's two ways of doing that. One, you can just do it directly on a per mailbox basis. You can open up that user's mailbox properties and add in that SMTP address. Or you can use email address policies so you can apply them to multiple users at once. Now when you installed Exchange, it came with this default policy here in the email address policies area. So let's just edit that now and have a look at what we've got. Okay, so here in the wizard we can see it's got a name of default policy uh, and it's applying to all recipient types. So that means users as well as groups and contacts. And we can preview what that filter looks like. And at the moment there's only one mailbox in the organization which is the administrator account. So this email address uh, policy at the moment is only applying to that one mailbox that exists. And now here are the email addresses that are being applied. So because exchangebootcamp.local was the uh, first uh, accepted domain in the organization, being the same uh, fully qualified domain name as the forest, that's the one that's been configured here in this email address policy. But of course that's not going to work out on the internet, uh, as we've already said. And what we want to use uh, in my lab environment here is exchangebootcamp.com. Uh, in your lab environment, you'll want to use your own domain name for, uh, for your organization. So let's go ahead now and click on Add and add in that uh, S uh, new SMTP email address. Now you have a few options here as you, are, uh, as you are adding it in because there are two parts to every email address. So there's the uh, what is referred to as the local part. So that is the part before the at symbol. So um, you have a, a few options here for configuring the alias or a first name dot last name type arrangement and so on and so forth. So you get a lot of flexibility with how you want your email addresses to be automatically generated. Um, alias is a very common one and that's the default one. Uh, first name dot last name is also used a lot. So uh, and in some cases um, organizations will just leave that set to alias but the alias will actually be the combination of first name dot last name anyway. So I'm not going to change this for now, I'm just going to leave it as use alias. And you can either specify a custom uh, fully qualified domain name or um, by choosing this option here you can select one of the accepted domains that's already been configured. So I'll just click on browse and as you can see that exchangebootcamp.com uh, which we configured uh, in a previous lesson as an accepted domain is available there to choose so I'll go ahead and pick that one. And now we've got this new entry here in the email addresses list uh, percentage M meaning alias at exchangebootcamp.com Now notice that one of them is in bold and one of them is not. So the bold one is going to be the reply address that is configured on the mailboxes. So if you consider that any mailbox can have multiple SMTP addresses associated with it but only one of those will be the reply address and the reply address is the email address that any new mail that that person sends will be appearing to have come from. So when I send a mail uh, to another person the reply address that is configured on my account or the one that appears in bold um, when you look at the list of them is the one that they see as being the from address for that email. So it won't work if that is set to exchangebootcamp.local because that's not going to work out there on the internet. Exchangebootcamp.com is actually the one that I, I want to use in this lab. So I'm going to highlight it and select set as reply. And you can see it switches to bold now and the other one just goes back to regular font. So now when this email address policy applies, it's going to add the alias at exchangebootcamp.com uh, email address to the mailbox and it will also make that the reply address. So I'll go ahead and uh, finish off this wizard. You have the option to apply email address policies uh, at on a schedule basis uh, or not at all. So basically um, you can do it, I'm going to do it immediately in this case, 
uh, but if you were implementing uh, something uh, that required a bit more precise timing like a weekend cutover uh, you could uh, schedule that uh, to, to uh, occur at a particular time and that's now been completed. So let's have a look at the outcome of that on that administrator mailbox. So I'll just open up the administrator mailbox properties, go to the email addresses tab. As you can see now, administrator at exchangebootcamp.com is the primary SMTP address. The other one has been set as uh, just a secondary address.